from San Francisco, California. This is the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Friday, the 13th of August, 2021, and it is 1.12 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. This is day 13 of the Dog Days of Podcasting, where I attempt to do a show a day for the entire month of August, along with a bunch of other podcast nerds. Yesterday, I forgot to post the show. <laughs> I recorded the damn thing and forgot to publish it. So technically, I am disqualified, and I should uh, <sighs> resign from the uh, minions of podcasters, but I'm going to still keep it going, friends. It was, if you do have the Rock and Roll Geek app, it came down because it got published on the Libsyn, but not on the Rock and Roll Geek, on Rock and Roll Geek.com. So here I am. I just published it, so that's up. Here I am doing another show. I am home early because I have a Feather Witch gig and I'm going straight to the mountain house. As soon as we get off stage, I'm heading up, heading north. I'm probably going to drive. It's, it's, I'm probably going to drive maybe an hour and pull over and go to sleep. I'm bringing my dog with me to the gig. Oh, this is going to be a very risky. I got a dog bed behind my seat in my car or my truck. And I'm going to try to find a spot out front. And I'm going to hang out with her in the car the entire night, except for when I'm on stage or when I'm loading in and doing a sound check. It's risky, but man, I don't want to have to come home and then sleep two hours and get up super early and go. And I want to get the hell out of here because we, this town's getting uh, a little bit stressful for me. And I need to go on, well, I do need to unwind too, but I need to go in the mountains and hang out for at least a couple of days. It's smoky up there, but I got to, I got to do it. I got to get out of here. I'm going nuts. All right. So I hope you enjoyed, uh, well, if you didn't, you probably didn't enjoy yesterday's dog days because it didn't come down until just now. So here's two, right back to back, friends. I got an audio comment from James Buck from Dallas. I think he's from Dallas. Greetings, Michael Butler. <laughs> this is JB hey, in JB. Dallas, hey, JB. formerly JB of Las Vegas, ah. JS Skulls. On the Facebook group, Rock and Roll Geek, Facebook group of which you did not create, but yeah, you do approve. That's right. So you don't, so we can keep out uh, Riff Raff. Mario Cuomo, who's yes. trying to fill you up through your shirt. Yes. <laughs> so we appreciate you keeping us all safe. Thank you. Um, congratulations on embarking on yet another Dog Days of August. Um, in recognition and appreciation, I just dropped in the mail an envelope to you. Ooh, that thank is. You. Cold cash. Ah, Michael. love it. Stick it to the man. Thank you, friend. Thank you, friend. Tax-free cash. I like it. That's very much appreciated, JB. More than you know. You saved the show, friend. Keep it cash. Keep it cash. Yes. Keep an eye out for that. Hitting your P.O. box. I appreciate there that. There in the Mountain House Ooh, area. Okay. Maybe it'll be ma- waiting anyway, for me when I thought, get there. Anyway, uh, I know it's a, a struggle sometimes for you to come up with topics for your dog days, although we do appreciate listening to your uh, dinner plans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I do really appreciate yeah. it. What like. is my dinner plan tonight? I have no dinner plans. I'm going to have to pull. I'm going to have to stop and get something. Maybe I'll go up to the. I'm going to get some takeout because I'm not going to make a mess at the house. Because the wife will kill me. So I'm going to uh, go get something, bring it home and eat it and feed the dog. So that's my dinner plan. Tonight. Really enjoy the road, the road stories, because that's a lot of us getting to live vicariously through you. So uh-huh. we appreciate that. Um, but I did want to pop in with a legacy show review. If you if you need a, a one to add, I do I I'd throw that out to Thank you, you, friend. Um, get to that in a minute. But I did actually I had another idea for maybe dog days, maybe some friends of the show can call in with this idea or, or uh, you know, those friends of the show from the Facebook group. But yeah. I was thinking I'd, like, I'd be interested in hearing stories about people's like random encounters with some of our rock and roll heroes in normal life. And what I mean by that is like anything, like seeing them in a grocery store or something or a bar or restaurant. I or- think that's a great idea. Friends... Have you had a celebrity encounter with a musician? 
rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Record yourself into your phone and send it to me, friends. I, that's a great idea. I don't idea, mean like at a meet and greet or like yeah. hanging out by the tour bus. So. But if you came, well, I'm, I'm even okay with that. If you went to a meet and greet and they were a jerk and they threw you off the bus or something, I'm into those stories too. Remember Eric um, the, Eric Mortensen, the rock and roll, the, or the metal, the, uh, what is it? Shit, the metal uh, CPA. <laughs> My brain's fried. I'm not drinking beer right now. I'm drinking iced tea because it's too early. I like all that. I like that idea, though, JB. Please send them to me, friends. Well, I guess those could be some interesting stories, but more just like completely random moments. If anybody's had random stories like that, or if you have, I'd be interested in hearing that. Well, I was on a. I was flying down to L.A. once to go rehearse with Ginger and. Uh, Steve Perry was on my flight. He was. I saw him sitting at the uh, gate waiting to board. It was a uh, Southwest flight. He sat in the back of the plane, and I sat about two rows in front of him. I was kind of um, spying on him. I didn't want to take picture. I did take a picture like a uh, when he was at the at the gate, and I kind of took a stealth photo. He knew I was taking the photo, and he was but right behind me. And all the flight attendants were like swooning over him. <clears throat> So that's a celebrity sighting. I was also on a plane getting off the plane, and Neil Young was right behind me getting off the plane. And uh, I was going to take a picture of him, but he looked like he was in a pissed off mood. Also, I was on a plane with uh, Greg Ginn. Greg, no, Greg Ken, not Greg Ginn from Black Flag, but Greg Ken of uh, They Just Don't Ride Them Like Daddy. He was on the plane with his manager, sitting right next to me on the plane. I'll start Not up. on the next to me, but right in the row over. I'll, go, I'll give you a little one. Uh, years ago, I was with some buddies in Chicago and we were kind of in the downtown area and we went to a, there's a sports bar down there named, uh, Mother Hubbard's. Now, anyone from the Chicago area may be familiar with it. It's kind of a, it's a known sports bar. That's uh kind of a little kind of near the miracle mile shopping district and where a lot of tourists may be. Uh, but it's a really cool sports bar, but ton of TVs and bar food and things like that. I'm in there with some buddies during football season, late, like late early fall. So like the end of baseball season, beginning of football season, we're watching a bunch of games in there. And I see a group of individuals come into the bar. There's about, I would say six or seven. Let's, let's say there's seven of them. Posse. Six out of the seven are dressed like head to toe in Anaheim angels gear or wow. Los Angeles angels or California angels or whatever the hell they're named now. But, Angels gear, but Angels baseball gear, Major League Baseball gear, like shirts and hats and like they'd been to a game. And the seventh person who was not dressed like that, who was dressed more normally, was fucking Michael Anthony of Van Halen. Oh, nice. And I remember the group of guys I was with are not my music friends. They're more of my sports friends, uh, and they don't really know music uh, or follow music the way I do. And so they had no idea who it was. And I was like, oh, my God. It's like, that's fucking Michael Anthony. Huh. And, of course, they were just like, who? What? <laughs> anyway, I thought it was so bizarre. And then I uh, – so I'm like, well, yeah, what the hell? Does he have a friend that plays for the Angels or something, you know? And so I immediately look. I thought, oh, the Angels must be in town playing the White Sox, American League team. And I looked it up, and no, they weren't. I'm like, oh, maybe there's an interleague game. And I'm like, no, because we, we had just been to the Cubs game the night before. And the, the Angels were not in town. And I still, to this day, cannot figure out why Michael Anthony was hanging out in a sports bar in Chicago with a bunch of people wearing Anaheim Angels. Maybe gear, there was Los a Angels Angels maybe gear. there was an Angels game on television, an away game on TV, and they stopped in to watch the game, JB. I don't know. Very strange. Although I did learn out later. I didn't know at that time. But I didn't realize this until later. I guess Michael Anthony actually is originally from Chicago. I did not uh, I think know he that. Moved to Pasadena when he was a kid, uh, or maybe for high school or something. So maybe there's a family connection there, and that's why he was in Chicago. Anyway, so there's my. I'll start it out with that. If any of the other uh, friends of the did you each talk show to have some interesting stories about randomly seeing rock stars out in public, I, I'd be interested in hearing some of those. Or if you have any, also Michael. I ran into. I've I've told this story before. I ran into Rick Nielsen at MacWorld. Set many when I first started doing a podcast, like. Uh, Maybe like the, after I had been doing it less than a year, I mean, it was, this was around 2004, 2005, and I was at Macworld, and he was walking down the, just walking the show floor, looking at Apple stuff, and I walked up to him and said, "Hey, Rick, uh, 
Hey, Rick Nielsen, I'm a big fan. Uh, I love your last album, um, Special One. It's a great album. And he goes, hey, you hear that? This guy likes Special One. He was with his manager. This guy likes Special One. And I said, hey, would you do an ID for my podcast? He goes, oh, sure, Rock and Roll Geek Show. I'm a, this is Rick Nielsen. I'm a Rock and Roll Geek. I got that ID so, somewhere. I have to look for it. But, yeah. And he goes, anything interesting out here on the show floor? And I was real nervous, and I kind of, like, clam, clammed up on him. But, yeah. Keep give me your rock star uh, or celebrity sightings, friends. Rockandrollgeek at gmail dot com. I think that's a great topic, JB. Back to you. Anyway, um, so I wanted to get on to this. Oh crap! Hang on a second. Hang on, Michael. Sorry. I'll I'm wait. Text. I'll wait. Sorry. Turn. Uh, La da da. Sorry. I'm getting text from, uh, from Eddie Trunk. Eddie Trunk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm I'm part of a. <laughs> a group text group with him and uh-huh. Slash and right. Billy Gibbons and uh, Stephen Piercy from Brad, and Joe Bonamassa. You know, you know how yeah, he is. You know. You know, he's the in crowd, the in crowd. So, hey. Don't forget uh, John Five and Tom Morello as well, and 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 a uh, Baz. Sorry, he's he's asking how I was doing. He had a he was sharing a knock knock joke that he had uh-huh. that Joe Elliott from Def Leppard had told him. So he was sharing that with the group here. Let me hang on. Let me respond. Yeah, he's asking ahead. how I'll to do it. Let I'll me wait. respond I'll back wait. here. Hang on. Sorry, Michael. I'll wait. I'll wait. You can skip past this if you want, I'll but wait. let me uh let me respond back here. Yeah. Uh, su- super great. great. <laughs> Couldn't <laughs> be better. Oh, I love it. I fucking love it. <laughs> um, just enjoying a Five. Ice, oh yeah, cold. Tecate. Tecate. Ah. I was about tecate. Tecate. T e c a t e. Tecate. Exclamation point. Yeah, that, that'll go right over his head. He won't. Yeah, get he it. won't get it. He's... Anyway, sorry about that. Okay. No problem. Anyway, back friend. to the. No uh, okay, got a um, <laughs> legacy show review for you. Um, also, hey, wanted to tell you, thanks so much for that uh, ZZ Top episode you did. Much, much. Praise and rest in peace to the late yes. great Dusty Hill. That really bummed me out. Yeah. I love ZZ Top. And before you'd even done your show, I'd actually had done a similar thing where I just went through all the old albums and just listened to some of the great deep cuts again and just jammed it. And just uh, so many people, I don't think, really truly understand the greatness of that band, mainly because they just know some of the major hits. But every one of those albums, you can find multiple great just fantastic jams to rock out to so anyway thanks for doing that appreciate it and kind of along the same lines i know it's been a while now but i'm still majorly bummed out about uh losing eddie van halen just because i feel like we've wasted so many late years there where we missed out on some great music from him Uh, but i understand why so my legacy show review i'm going to do was one of my favorite concerts ever um this was going to be a van halen concert that i went to the date is July 25th, 1993. That now, would... This is the Sammy Hagar years. Okay. Now, I have seen both versions. Now, 93, that's probably one of the later albums, right? Pound Cake era? Back to you, J.B. Van Halen. However, to qualify that, the David Lee Roth version I saw was the reunion version with uh-huh. had Wolfgang Van Halen on bass. So I never got a chance to see the original. Van All right, I'm going to interrupt you there. I, I've said this many times. I saw him on the very first tour opening for Black Sabbath on the Never Say Die tour at the Jacksonville Coliseum. Saw him the following year on Van Halen 2 at the um, Jacksonville Civic Auditorium. I think that's what the venue on the Van Halen 2 tour, one of the greatest shows I've ever seen in my life. Band, the band Screams opened up with Brad Elvis on drums. But I've seen Van Halen multiple times, both the Sammy Hagar and the reunion version with Dave Lee Roth. And I look, I'm for one, I'm not one of these people who bashes Sammy Hagar. I don't quite get it. I, I understand. I appreciate everyone's opinions. Uh, but, but I, you know, I like the Van Hagar years. Um, I don't get an argument about which one is better. I think they're two different type of entities. And one of my one of the greatest concerts I've ever seen in my life was this one, which was the tour was for, uh, they had done a live album called Right Here, Right Now, and they did a summer tour for this. And that's, uh, around, this was actually right that's around Eddie Van Halen's uh, super drunk period, right? Before things went bad. So it's kind of amazing now to think about how much, how great a concert it was. But, 
one of the things I always really, really, really appreciated about Eddie Van Halen is I, besides obviously his talent was that I can't think of any rock musician who showed more joy playing their instrument. Yeah, that's him. true. Always I had mean, a smile. Just always awesome. He was always just jumping around and smiling when he was in a good mood. And, you know, none of that fucking, you know, grunge stare at the floor on everything's miserable nonsense. Like he just fucking loved it and it, and it showed. Um, this, uh, this concert was at a place called Deer Creek Music Center. At that time, it was called Deer Creek Music Center. I know it's probably got some corporate name now. This was in uh, Noblesville, Indiana, which is just outside of Indianapolis. I had seen multiple concerts there during my youth. And to this day, I still think, as far as outdoor sheds go, it was still one of my favorite ones to go to. I don't know what it's like now. I haven't been there in years. But when I would go there, it was nice because Noblesville is kind of a small town outside of Indianapolis. And it was actually set back out like in the fields. I don't know if it's like that way now, but out in the cornfields almost where it was like, it was dark out there. So it was like, it was very more secluded. You didn't have like a backdrop of like a bunch of buildings. You could make out the the only lights were the lights coming from the stage. So I always thought that was awesome. Um, On this tour, the opening band was uh, the Vince Neil band. And I remember Uh at that point, (laughs) Vince Neil had just been fired from, Motley Crue or something, so he was going to embark on his debut. Right, he did a solo, solo album. Career. He had an album out called Exposed, which was, I don't remember, I don't know, the, the whole album sucked. But he had like two songs that were getting like some radio airplay, and I remember him playing them during that concert. One was, and they were both awful. One <laughs> yeah. was called like Sister of Pain or something. It sounded like a bad uh, Motley Crue song. And then he had a song that was part of a soundtrack remember like the the movie Encino Man or something like that. I don't remember. It was one of those bad movies. And the song was, you're inf- you're invited, but your friends can't come. And I remember that was like his yeah, big closing. Yeah, that was his that one night. hit. There is an opening act. It just seems so corny as shit. Um, all right. I'm going to run through the set list here. I won't spend okay. a t- bunch of time on this. I know you're not the biggest. Uh, not Sam- the biggest Van Hagar fan, but I've seen, I've seen them a few times with Sammy on vocals. Hagar version of Van Halen fan. So you, you can sing along to any songs if you All want, right. but I just remember this being a fantastic concert. Uh, they opened up with Mine All Mine, which was a bit of a... Mine All oh Mine! I don't know that one. Surprise. That's off the OU812 album. Okay. And then running through these, Why Can't This Be Love? It's got what it takes, so tell me why can't this be love? Okay. Pound Cake. Hey, 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 I played uh, for a short period of time. I was in a Sammy Hagar tribute band. We never played live uh, with this guy in town who does a uh, Van Halen hot for teacher. And we played pound cake. These guys use backing tracks. I fucking dreaded going to practice with these guys. I got myself kicked out of the band. I could not stand these fucking Van Hagar tunes. Could not. S- I enjoyed playing the Montrose tunes, and I like playing the Sammy Hagar solo stuff. But when it came time to the Van Halen stuff, which, by the way, all the ke- keyboards were on backing tracks, the singer brought. Well, I like the singer guy. He's a nice guy. And the guitar player, Tommy's a nice guy as well. But, man, I hated playing th- that music. Today, Panama. Panama! Is Featherwood's playing that tonight? I'm not sure if that's on our set list or not. But we are playing uh, Wasted Years from Iron Maiden. Cannot wait to fucking play that song tonight. Sorry for the cussing. Walks in. Run around. I remember that being awesome. You want to give me the run around? Then there was a Michael Anthony bass solo. Uh Top of the world. Pleasure Dome. Standing on top of the world for a little while. Don't know Pleasure Dome. The Alex Van Halen drum solo, probably to this day, I still say one of the most underrated rock drummers of all time. Fantastic drummer. Fantastic drummer. (laughs) For that matter, Michael Anthony, one of the most underrated bass players of all time. Not get the credit, the the props he should. Probably because just being in the shadow of Eddie all those years. Uh, Dreams, right now. Then, Right now! It's dream, uh, dream. I don't remember how dreams go, but right now! Sammy does his kind of like a little acoustic solo part where he's saying "Give to Live" and "Eagles Fly." Oh uh-huh, yeah. Finish what you started. Best Come on, both. baby, finish what you started. Come on, finish me. He should probably because just being in the shadow of Eddie. Back to too far. Dreams right now. 
then Sammy does his kind of like a little acoustic solo part where he's saying, get to live and eagles fly. Finish what you started. Best of both worlds. I want the best of both worlds. And and ladies and gentlemen, EVH. It's always amazing. And then this, uh, this next one was a total shock. We were completely, now again, this is early nineties. Excuse me. There was no internet. We weren't, you didn't know what the set list was going to be. So you, everything was a surprise, right? And the next song was a total surprise. They played Unchained, which I don't. Unchained. Yeah. <laughs> Chained. How's the fucking song go? I don't remember how the damn song. <sighs> Chained. You know how it goes. I don't need to sing. I think up until that tour, they had ever done with Sammy Hagar. It was just, I mean. I remember my group of buddies that were with us. The one guy, I remember, I still remember this quote. Did he do the, uh, you'll get some leg tonight for sure? He's like, after this concert, he's like, I can't believe that. He said, I almost shit a Christmas tree when they played Unchained. <laughs> uh, then they did, there's only one way to rock. There's only the one set, way! A Sammy solo song. Talking about love. Uh, Ain't talking about love! The encore was Jump. Might as well jump. You really got me. And then another strange thing to close it out. They did Rock in the Free World. In New York. Keep on rocking in the free world. In the free world. I mean, it just was, I mean, they just killed Keep it. on walking in the free world. Okay. It was awesome. <laughs> and the, I remember the show closed and they had all these fireworks going off from the top of the venue. Yeah. Up into this, I mean, it was just awesome. They did that so the band could get the hell out of the venue before traffic got bad. I just... It's hard for me to remember a concert that was just from beginning to end with so much fun. Well, that's great. Had so much energy and just a straight up good time. We were drinking our beers. We were sitting on the lawn. Um, I remember just a couple weeks earlier, we had gone to the Aerosmith concert, same venue for the Get a Grip tour. I remember being disappointed. Now, don't don't take that wrong. I'm a massive Aerosmith fan. I've seen multiple Aerosmith concerts. Which tour? I think I've done some show reviews on Aerosmith on your show. Um but that, I don't know, maybe they're just off that night, but it wasn't that great. Um, you know, I don't even know, Mike. As I'm reading through this, I feel like I've done this show review on your show before. If not, I'm sorry. You have not. You, you have not. Just trying to help you out on dog You days. have not, friend. For any any of the fans of the show out there who who want to get a taste of this concert, I found a YouTube uh, recording, not from that show, but same tour in Middletown, New York. So if you YouTube Van Halen Live, Middletown, New York, Watch the whole thing. I mean, if you're a Van Halen fan, especially Van Hagar version, you're going to love it. Because I just, it reminded me so much of that night. It took me back to that night. It was damn near the exact same set list, I think. And uh, I think you'll get a real good taste of what I mean by how a great concert that was. So anyway, Michael, hope this isn't too long. But I know you're looking for some content for the dog days. Again, thank you for everything. Keep an eye out for that cash. Don't report it. Stick it to the man, Yes. Michael. And, right. of course, as always, stay frosty. Stay frosty, friend. Thank you, J- James Buck from Dallas. You, too, can leave me a show review from the past or the cur- or the present. Or give me your celebrity encounters, your rock star encounters or whatever. Rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Thank you very much for that, JB. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to the cash in the P.O. box up in the mountain house. Let's hope I make it safely tonight. I'm not good at driving at night. Hopefully my dog will be okay while I'm at the gig. I'm a little bit nervous about that. But I do not want to have to come all the way back home from the East Bay and then turn around and go back. So, And I want to get up to the Mountain House as soon as I can. I want to get up there bef- so I can have lunch up there on Saturday. All right. Thank you, friends, for joining me. Rockandrollgeek.com is where you can find this show. Find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. Find me on the... Uh, Twitter, r and Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. Don't forget about the Facebook group, the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group. You just got to answer two questions so that I know you're not uh, one of those Mario Cuomo people. Also, this show is a value for value. Time, talent, and treasure is what Alec, was what uh, Adam Curry says. So anything, that, if you get any value out of this show, as Adam Curry says, put a number to it, friends. Whatever that means. Okay, Thank you for listening. I'm going to play a brand new Wild Hearts tune. Just came down this morning called Sleep Away. And I really like this tune. The video is really good. Super gory. There's tons of gore in this video. I love it. Because I know Ginger is a, a horror movie fan. So, And the song, Catchy as Hell. 
the intro is my favorite kind of Wild Hearts intro. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll talk to you tomorrow, friends. Hopefully I'll be in the Mountain House. If you do not hear from me tomorrow, God forbid, that means something happened on the way up. But let's hope that doesn't happen. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow, friends. Here's Wild Hearts.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs>